All right. Welcome back. Twin Flame Energy online podcast. I am your host, Dominique. And I'm your co-host, AJ. <laughs> this is podcast number five. And the title of today's podcast is The Hard Questions, How to Approach Them. Mm -hmm. So how you feeling? I am ready. I'm ready to too. get in and to dive into this one. Got a slight headache, this but is, I'm going to work through it. This is, well, well drink some water. <laughs> well, you know how that goes. Wow, wow. That's a struggle too. <laughs> but anyways, to get started with things today, of course, I have the trusty articles in hand. I have mm -hmm. three, so mm -hmm. we'll get to three or if not or whatever, mm -hmm. whatever. We'll go from there. So the first one I have in hand here is from understood.com, excuse me, understood.org. Mm -hmm. And it mm -hmm. is nine tips for having difficult conversations with your partner. Dun, dun, dun. Basically. <laughs> All right. It says, do you and your partner avoid certain topics because the conversation will be Maybe you dread discussing parenting tips or how much services or your child costs or tips like that. Mm -hmm. Talking about mm -hmm. tough things like that. Okay. So, number one, give up the need to be right. It says, remind mm -hmm. yourself that it's all about finding a solution to a problem. Right. And the solution will likely affect the whole family. Right. Okay. That's the hardest part. That's probably the hardest part because the the need to be right. It's almost like an argument or something. Mm -hmm. like, it's like it's the argument is only an argument because the other people, other party is trying to be right. You're trying to be right. Back and forth, da -da 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 -da. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Instead of it being like, okay, what is our end? Mm -hmm. Are we on this? Like we, we want the same goal. We just have different direction going to the same goal. Right. You know what I mean? It's like going to the same place, but I know a shortcut and you know a shortcut. There are two different shortcuts, but we have to agree somewhere. So it's kind of like, it almost seems, it sounds like that a little bit. Yeah, definitely. Number two, choose the right time to talk. So instead chat when you're both at your best, ideally try to talk after you've both had a chance to unwind and can focus on your conversation. Sorry, I fell. You tearing up the set? <laughs> no. <laughs> Did you get that or do I need to reread? Go ahead. One more time. <laughs> <laughs> Says, choose the right time to talk. Uh -huh. Chat when you are both at your best. Ideally, try to talk after you have a chance yes. to unwind yes. and can focus on the conversation. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's our, one of our hardest things is yeah. that we'll be in a conversation and when I want to stop, you don't. When you want to stop, I don't. Negative. I'm whoa, 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 whoa. I'm always okay <laughs> to stop. You, this, you have to no, take this no, moment no, no, no. Listen, to know listen. this is more your problem than mine. Listen, no. Because you can be because, in the middle and I can feel it getting heated and I'll be like, about, nope. What about, and you're like. But what about when I'm like, okay, let's just, let's just take a minute. You know what I mean? And I say that, and you'd be like, no, you know? I think, well, let me say this. When I do it, it's mostly when we're talking about the kids. Because I feel like in order to go to the next step of that moment, mm -hmm. then we need to make a decision now. So, that, you know, we need to sort this out because we need to tell Ellie what to do in the next five minutes. That kind of thing. Yeah. But most of our arguments is is always uh, ignited by the kids, I will say. And I, that, that may be a thing in-, in 70 percent. Probably 90. Yeah, I'd give it 70 <laughs> to 80. But what I'm saying, I think that may be a thing in a lot of relationships is that, <laughs> is like us, we won't, we, we don't have no problems. Mm. But when it, when it comes to the kids, it's like, it's always a something in there. It's something in there. We know, we have problems. That I mean, no, no be of course, kid no related problems that will start that. it and it'll snowball into our problems. Yeah, that's what it does. Yeah. So number three, mm -hmm. start the conversation positively. Mm -hmm. Now I found this, so I'm going. <laughs> me uh being condescending at the moment. 
or excuse me, cynical. Mm. Says, show how much you appreciate your partner's willingness to talk about the difficult topic and to work with you to find a solution. Thank you for talking about this issue with me. <laughs> it's really been weighing on my mind. And I always feel better when we think things through together. That it sounds great. <laughs> but who's really doing that? <laughs> yeah, I don't think nobody's gonna do that. <laughs> like, thank you so much. Well, I think talking you know this what? through with and me. I think I think we are not in the correct perspective at the moment either. Mm -hmm. I think our perspective is more argumentative mm -hmm. type things. And they're not talking about an argument. They're speaking of just a a serious conversation. Right. Or very serious topic. Right. So I guess in in the line of just speaking about something that's serious and like, hey, we have a serious, deep conversation. Yeah. Um. It's. It, I mean, it kind of makes sense for that. You know what I mean? Like, like I'm, you know, I'm happy that we're able to talk about something like serious and kind of get come to an agreement or something. You know? Yeah. So I guess that makes sense a little. Yeah. Number four, and I put in the little thing next to it. You say that this is me. <laughs> <laughs> it says stay focused on the problem at hand oh yeah it says let's talk about one thing at a time or i'm happy to talk to you about that issue tomorrow is what yep. they say you should say however i do believe oh, man. that you have to sometimes talk about the root and the root you know. leads to 12 problems so if we skip the 12 problems and we talk about the root just because the root isn't why we got to the conversation. The root will things no, versus us because, thinking about one little leaf. No, that's because you, for you, that's the root. For anyone else, the planet or existence of any dimension, <laughs> it's not because we'll be like talking about a a a, a, a cup or a, a, a the table, and then it goes into you know. Uh, the door or the the floor and the why the wall is this and why this is that and you know to you they're related and no shortchanging that and and I'm acknowledging that but uh you know you one know. day we're gonna start doing social media polls on our Instagram <laughs> at Twin Energy Eleven if you are not following um, <laughs> polls and we're gonna find out from the general public if stuff is related because you say. It's only related to me. However, mm -hmm. if I ask anybody else, they agree it's related. So I think it's because you don't want to dig deep is the only reason why you don't think things are related. No, no, what it is is that, you know, I think, and it, it may be just a situation where, honestly, men get things like right here on the surface. Superficial. Well, no, it's just that we're talking about this, this clipboard. I don't want to go into Thing about that you know, piece of paper over there in the corner but to you that piece of paper is related to the clipboard you know what i'm saying and it's if, a but paper, let's talk about this listen, clipboard if the clipboard as, is, if, as the, is. if the clipboard bought in order to house the piece of paper it's related yes if the no. only reason why we own the clipboard is for that piece of it's paper re it's, related, it's related it's related in that sense but i say that it's because if we're if we're having a agreement about the clipboard don't bring in all the other pieces of paper yeah it might be related to that but that's not the problem at hand the problem now is we have an issue with the clipboard number five <laughs> while your partner is talking just listen oh so listening <laughs> is key to making difficult conversations work uh -huh. which means truly hearing what your partner is saying when you're having a discussion, mm -hmm. stopped interrupting. Mm -hmm. Don't start thinking about the next comment while your partner submits sentence, uh. stay present <laughs> and try to absorb your partner's comment. Uh. You start talking, take yeah. five seconds is what I wrote next to it. Uh. Laughing why? I'm just, no, I'm just like, mm -hmm. just, I'll make, you know, so the energy is more volatile. To uh huh? The energy of the podcast is more volatile. Why? 
Number six. This is great. <laughs> reflect on what you hear, even if you don't agree. Okay. So one way your partner will know you're really listening is to reflect back on what you've heard. Mm -hmm. Let me see right. you can say something right. like, let me see if I fully understand what you're saying. Right. They call it reflective listening. I think that one is super, super important. I even think repeating. You can say, so what I've heard you say is, Blah 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 yes. blah, and then yes. the person can be like, "That's yes. exactly what I'm trying to say." And I think that's very helpful for you in particular, because I think there's a lot of times that you may say something and it's not what you mean, and so and I'm taking what you're saying because I'm very literal. So if you say something, I'm like, "Your yeah, words you're, mean you're like this." No, I, I just I I know what the dictionary definition of a word is. So it's like say, "I'm hot today." I hear I'm hot. And you're like, well, what I meant to say is um, I'm just a little warmer than usual. Like, it, you you kind of have this gray area of your meaning. meaning that. What if I mean you say? <laughs> but that's not what we're talking about. See, but it don't matter. That's my interpretation. So we go Gotta refer back to the I'm last literal. question and listen to listen. what I'm saying in entirety. Then you might understand what I'm saying. Like I said, reflective listening <laughs> will be very valuable uh -huh. here. Number seven, let's take it back to last week's podcast, I think. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Nothing kills a productive conversation faster than accusations. You always do this. Why? <laughs> <laughs> Your partner is likely to feel defensive mm -hmm. or even mm -hmm. counter attack. Right. Which we're really good at. Right. Number eight. Try to find something you agree with. Is there any crossover in your feeling? A little uh, consensus can help you both feel like you're beginning to contribute to the solution. Mm -hmm. And this was a great example. It says, I know you think we should let Lily play until she finished her homework. Or sh we shouldn't let Lily play mm -hmm. until she finished her homework. Mm -hmm. I agree that her homework is very important and she needs to get through it all. Mm -hmm. I just think it'll be easier if she gets a break in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. So, they're saying the way that the person worded that, they it's spoke approach. to the fact yes. that they both agree that the homework is important. Right. However, one believes to get it all yeah. done in one foul Because that's, yeah, that will be a thing to go through. Absolutely. Lot, you know, because, because I'm, because, I'm you, know. you know, I don't like to take yesterday crap into today. So, yeah. I'll be like, Okay, Ellie did whatever ever yesterday. Real straightforward. Like, if your room is dirty, it needs to be picked up before you do anything. Right, but I think and I'm, I'm more in up. tune with her energy in terms of our kids. I would say that I'm in tune with energy also, but I do feel like there is a sense of, like, you know, l like earning things in a sense of rewarding things. And what also do is what that will contribute to the energy as well. You know, being that I did something, I finished it, and I completed it. Like, I'm great about that, you know. Also, like, for example, she's got that crappy bus driver that I'm supposed to call. I didn't call. <laughs> I don't like crappy people messing with my kid. You become my enemy at that moment. Um, <laughs> yeah. She's Honestly, she's got. Well, listen, she's got that crappy bus driver. Mm -hmm. So gets off the bus she's already low in terms of her energy yeah. i don't want her to come in and like all right let's go let's get to your room let's go I'm no, let's I, take no, a moment to I bring her that. frequency i get that and then we can start to tackle things and they don't have to feel like that's to totally die. different that's totally different. i'm talking about on a normal day regular day everything's good everything you know mm -hmm. you know it's like okay I, I understand you're excited to play your new game but absolutely I'm, you know yeah. I that's what I'm talking about. Any other time? No. Yeah. You know, for sure. I understand. All right. Number nine. Take a time out if you must. No matter how hard you try, your discussion may reach a point. It's too heated to continue. Consider setting up a time out signal before you start. And obviously, both people need to know the signal and listen to it when it comes up. And do not ignore it, et cetera, et cetera. All righty. So, we're actually going to get a two more than one article today. I'm very happy about that. Oh, really? Because there are pointers in a few different ones. This is the second one I got here. Okay. And 
It is from, gosh darn it, I believe this is Psychology Today. Pretty sure. All of the links to all of the articles that we use will obviously be in the description box. So you can check those out. So this one is entitled, Five for Tough Conversations with Your Partner. And, I, and Psychology I, Today, if you heard this, you could sponsor us if you like. I'm, just saying. I'm a psychology student too. <laughs> <laughs> so the first one is recognize that avoidance won't work. Okay. So couples put their disagreements on pause and they run the risk of never having the chance to resolve the disputes. Mm -hmm. It says, like, there's a whole lot in this. It says, mm -hmm. imagine that your partner has what you find to be an annoying habit pocketing all the extra change in this and spending it on Powerball tickets every week. Mm -hmm. Not only does this strike you as a waste of money, mm -hmm. but it's an inconvenience for you to be able to find a quarter when you're running out of a parking meter for money. Mm -hmm. However, it seems so trivial that you say nothing at all until one day without warning, you explode in a fit of rage. Now that this has escalated to an intense level, other unresolved issues might be dragged into the and what started as a relatively minor difference leads to a large battle uh, <laughs> that's much more hard to resolve. Instead of letting the small annoyances continue to irk you, mm -hmm. it's better to come up with a strategy using one of the tips below okay. to start the conversation in a more rational way. This is us, 100 billion percent. Now, for those who... To, that to be simplified sum that up sum that up if there's something that is bothering you but mm -hmm. you decide i don't want to bring it up and you just keep bearing it down holding it back yep then at some point in time something little like something with the kids mm -hmm. will, trigger it. will trigger it and the yes. next thing you know you start vomiting the 12 A things lot. all yeah. month and then yeah. it's like you're on the verge of divorce and it all started because daughter wanted a snack and <laughs> <laughs> you said yes and the others yeah, said no yeah 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 and i i would say i would say you know you tend to hold a lot of things in 100 percent. you know like yeah 100 percent of the time 100 but then it's like we'll be like yeah no i don't i don't think i really want eggs today you know it's like oh your eggs already I'm like, wait, wait, whoa, whoa. Everything, whoa. everything, from, I, every, I see um, connections and everything. Um, if I've told you 12 times I don't like eggs, and then you do what I want for breakfast, because you do a lot of the cooking, we've already established that, moving right along. Um, <laughs> and I say, mm, I don't care. She cooks amazing too, by the way. No, but if I say, she does. Mm, I don't care, she, whatever you, know. you want to do is fine, and you bring eggs, it's a if I, you know, I don't like them. Yeah, but I can, just, that, that's like, that's like, you know, but on a serious, timing. that's timing. like me going in there and say, Hey, what do you want for dinner? You're like, oh, whatever you want to do. And, and I make mushrooms, mushrooms soup, and spinach, which are avocado. my favorites. Yes. Mushrooms <laughs> with spinach and avocado. Three things I love and, and you despise. Yeah. That is so disrespectful. That would be disrespectful for me to do to you. I know, but you do that sometimes. No, I don't put those things on your plate. No, not those things. I'm talking about other stuff. You get the gist. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Anyways, <laughs> number two, leave but sentences out. In a but sentence, you try to soften the blow of bad news by prefacing with good news. So it's like, I love that meat if you cooked for me last night. But <laughs> following the but is the critical comment, such as, it could have been cooked a little more. The hope you raise <laughs> with the pre-butt phrase is dashed with the post-butt conclusion. The, I said this to you probably maybe two weeks ago. Because mm -hmm. you said something and then you said but. I said, when you say but, everything you said before is shit. What you said. <laughs> Garbage to me now. You said but. Yeah. It's, they call this the good news, bad news tactic. I don't do that often, though. But No, not often. Of, look, look, I said but. No, I, I was saying, but a lot of people um, tend to do that. 
Yes. I, 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 I've seen a lot of people do that. And some of those people are just like, I don't know. They just have the need to, to, to feel like they know more or validate something. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's funny. You could have put this and you could have did that and you could have. It's like. Um, <laughs> no, but that's so funny. Mm -hmm. It says, rather than creating this stress in your partner, consider rephrasing your comment positive and negative mm -hmm. in an indirect manner ending with the good news mm -hmm. rather than starting with it so <laughs> i thought the meatloaf was a bit undercooked mm -hmm. but the wait it says i thought the meatloaf was a bit undercooked mm -hmm. but on the whole i really <laughs> found it to be tasty <laughs> no. well, that sounded the same to me <laughs> That's a, so, but nobody's gonna hear the tasty part it was it. a it was bit undercooked. undercooked, but it was amazing. No, that's <laughs> look, the but after that still <laughs> negates the first part of it, right? I know it's the positive negating the negative. So don't matter. It, it, either way, you do it. I think forward people or backwards, are just obsessed with hearing negatives. There period. You go. I don't care if you put it's it first, so last, bad. middle, Why? under, whatever. <laughs> yeah. That's so bad. So, number three was prepare the way. I like this. Another reason not to avoid conflict is that when you're feeling inevitably, uh, when you're feeling inevitably burst out in an uncontrolled way, mm -hmm. neither you nor your partner will have the chance to prepare mentally or emotionally. Mm -hmm. So you could say something like, here was a, an example um, on the paper mm -hmm. said, I'd like to discuss my feelings about how often we have sex versus I'd like to talk about the fact that we're not having sex very often. I right, I, they sound the same to me. Right, but whatever. <laughs> no, but no, I get that though. I get that because that's like you, you're you're always the person that that goes to the negative first mm -hmm. in something, and like when you start a conversation, you're talking about the fifty negatives, mm -hmm. but then you be like, but so what I mean is, it's like wait, wait, <laughs> yeah. So there was a positive in any of this, <laughs> yeah. Ninety. That's why I have ninety percent of the time I'll be like, uh, "Why is it everything so bad? It's just so bad." And you're like, "No, no, no, no." It was like, "Well, no, no." All that stuff, like was bad to me. <laughs> so yeah. So the next one is you, or you said earlier. I'm sorry. Uh, number four: agree on common goals. In any negotiation, the outcome is much more satisfying. For everyone, if all the parties decide what they would like to. F uh, find as acceptable of results. A common goal is different from mm -hmm. a common notion of what the result should be. Mm -hmm. So the common goal, I guess, could be like, at the end of this, I want us to walk away from this conversation feeling understood. Right. Versus right. at the end of this, I know that you and I will both want red drapes. <laughs> That's like specific yeah. versus being like, yeah. yeah. So... Number five, stay optimistic. Mm -hmm. It says, feeling that the situation is hopeless is an almost certain way to create a self-fulfilling prophecy. And I wrote next to it, I do this. I have very little hope in our conversations. Mm -hmm. I know I know that about myself. Like, this is not going to go anywhere. I don't even know what we're about to do. Came in I come into with, most. With debt. I say most <laughs> recently, probably in the last year, I come in our conversations like this assuming is, my it's debt, nothing is it that way nothing is going to come of this yeah and and then so then ultimately because that of that it you know what i mean mm -hmm. it's like you filled what you were saying mm -hmm. it was kind of like you were hoping that nothing comes of it yeah but i feel like i do that because i spent a lot of times being hopeful of conversations and then i'm like and then they don't go. But it kind of cancels out with holding so much in all the time. Mm -hmm. So then when it's like a big spill of so much and one conversation out of nowhere to the other party, mm -hmm. then it's kind of like that person is blindsided and like, uh, you know what I mean? So it kind of goes together. Yeah. I thought this was interesting from mindbodygreen.com mm -hmm. it's uh, uh the title of the article is a therapist explains how to have the honest conversations in your relationship mm. most relationships begin by discovering ways you and your partner are alike 
relishing in things you have in common and celebrating the goals, values, and dreams that make you believe you found the perfect partner. But just as partners are alike in some ways, they are also different in others. Although it can be to see in the beginning. And as relationships progress, partners can change, discovering new goals and values and uncovering more differences instead of similarities. In any long-term relationship, there are going to be difficult conversations, the times when you feel polarized about an issue, when your partner's point of view threatens your views, when you feel defensive, angry, frightened um, of what they're bringing up, or when you're at the point, when your point of view has changed. So I think that's a big deal. Like us, we are at 10 and a half years. We are definitely completely different from 10 and a half years ago. Mm -hmm. And I think that there are some things are still the root of arguments now, 10 and a half years later. However, our points of view have changed. So we can fight about like, transparency and things that we to fight at the beginning. Mm -hmm. But how I felt about it in the beginning, I know for me, how I felt about it in the beginning, I don't feel that way now. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to navigate the difference. You've spent so long fighting for something to be a specific way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can't really cite or sift out that you don't necessarily even want it that way anymore. You want it a different way, but you still have oh, yeah. a residual That's like effect of being mad that you didn't get it the first way. Yeah. It sounds weird. What you're saying, yeah. 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 That's so, interesting to think about. It that. is. When you when you think of different ways of you know, like we argued about this and then now I'm arguing about the same thing, but I feel different. It's a different way I would like to experience that. Because yes. I'm different. So so it makes it makes a lot of sense. And I think that you know when you're headed in a different direction when mm -hmm. you're arguments I intensify. Like I think we've reached a point because we have a million things in common mm -hmm. that our mm -hmm. non common things are poking out. And yeah. we're looking for our point of individuality and trying to see how those puzzles can right. fit. Right. I too that it, can it, be shaky time. I think that's another thing with and for those other other twin flamers out there, you know, which twin flames tend to have a lot in common but there is the reason why twin flames work because they have those things that are not in common that balances each other out mm -hmm. i think sometimes when you acknowledge like, that's something different you know i don't like i hate mushrooms you love mushrooms and we can when we know when we find that out it's almost like it's it's hurtful mm -hmm. you're like damn you know, I wish he would like mushrooms. And then it's like painful in a way. Mm -hmm. And so then it creates a, a argument or it creates something like, you don't like mushrooms, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's interesting to think about that instead of embracing some of the differences of each other. Like, well, to me, honestly, like, you know, I hate mushrooms, but I've been trying mushrooms. I've been trying a lot of different ones. And I still hate them. No, <laughs> no. I actually I made a Philly cheese uh, mushroom sub, and I ate the whole thing, mm -hmm. and it was it was actually pretty good. Yeah, you know what I mean. But I'm really trying to embrace certain and different mushrooms because the mushrooms I hate are not the same ones that I'm cooking with. You right. know what I mean. So I'm fine. That there's 50 different mushrooms that I could try. And maybe one of them may give me the texture I like because to me they all taste like chewy bubble gum like <laughs> and I think one of the biggest things is when you hone in differences, yeah, completely redefine your relationship and if you want the relationship to last, mm -hmm. you have to start creating boundaries and freedoms, I'd say. Like for example, Mm -hmm. It's been on my mind recently that I want to get to a point where we eat. I hate to say separately. We could obviously sit in the same room, <laughs> but like I kind of have some things on my mind that I want to do. Mm -hmm. 
and so that will require me to be like honing in on a specific like event and stuff like that and you know me i'm a i i have no problem with the counting of macro and stuff so i really want to get into that so that means that my flow is going to be very militant and you're more mm -hmm. fleet flowing mm -hmm. and we've had in the past mm -hmm. five years ago yeah. arguments about this like <laughs> Yeah. cook something yeah. and i'm like how much oil did you put in the pan you're like who cares oh, and i'm like God. it freaking matters damn i'm counting my <laughs> god dang calories like you know what i mean like so oh, because i know that about you i'm like Listen, if i'm on a militant mindset yeah. you can't make my food because I just have to keep it that way in order to keep my sanity but you have to be okay with that possibility mm -hmm. unless you're like you know what us doing things together means so much to me and I see how much this means. I'll flow your way. So, yeah, so put, either so you flow yeah. with that person, or you are okay with the separation. So, so yeah, put it this way: it's it's about respecting the differences and not wanting to work. control someone and not control it. Yes, it's because like if you like, want A and I want B, like you can have go B, have A. You can go look if you want to count and all that, you know. But don't try to force me I'm, to, to count. count. Yes, and then if you go count. Then you gonna have to find what you gonna cook, cause I ain't cooking it. No, exactly. <laughs> no, 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 no. One hundred. I, I look. I, to me, to be honest, I, I don't. I, I would, can't I wouldn't dictate mind. you. Yeah, but I wouldn't mind doing it for you, cause you know me. But I, I'm good. I would do that for you. But you know, like I can't do it freely without having the word that I'm Ex doing something wrong. I'm messing this up, or something is you know because it's not. <laughs> <laughs> right amount of this and listen it's only two pinches of salt not Oil three fat now it's three <laughs> pinches of salt now i have to put that into my category and it, in it and all freaking matters sodium's high but anyways oh, <laughs> but anyways okay so i think it's about that time we're gonna take a quick break and we'll be back in yeah because it's like all over the place lacy Move. Like I said, we'll be back in a moment. <laughs> I know what you love and I can't stand it. You know what I do when it's maddening. I know that you know that you drive me crazy. You know that I know that you bash shit crazy You know in your mind what could be happening I know what it means to live in madness I know that you won't leave me alone You know that I never desert you, baby I know that it can be very cryptic Hell no, that I used to be wounded I know that you always got my back, baby You know that I your back, baby. I know that you wanna know my secrets. You know that I want you to come and see this. I know that I can't trust you alone. You know that I would never hurt you. Here in this place, my sacred place, my sacred place. I'm so proclaimed.
break. We are back from the break. And and that was I know sacred place by vapors available on all platforms. Like that was that was dope. That was dope. So further ado, let's get back book of the month. You are the placebo by Joe Dispenza. And we are at the end of the line and the book is finished and it was an amazing read. Are you ready to recap on this week's chapters? I sure am. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so this <laughs> so this week we were finishing out the book. We read chapters 10, 11, and 12. Mm -hmm. So it was really cool because we really got into meditation. So mm. chapter particular was entitled meditation preparation and it was basically saying all of the participants in the book who changed something that we've talked about over the last few weeks about themselves had to first go inward and change their state of being mm -hmm. and obviously you can start even getting into that with meditation yeah. um in terms of when to meditate there are some tips in here so you should meditate two times a day uh, the most conducive meditation times are right in the morning and right when you go to bed at night. It's say like, this is because when you fall asleep, you're naturally, sh you have a natural, if I can speak, <laughs> you naturally shift through the entire spectrum of the wave state, going from your waking beta state to the slower alpha state, you close your eyes to the slower still theta state when you're half awake and half all the way down to the deep sleep data brain del excuse me del brain states so where to meditate in particular mm -hmm. of course they say to find a place where you won't have any distractions I highlighted this because I thought it was funny because it's I'm sorry I have a problem with the fact anytime I've been saying something to you and then I get confirmation from like a book or specialists, I make sure to highlight that moment. <laughs> you guys see my face. I would be looking at the camera. Well, season two, they might see your face. You mean three? <laughs> two. Oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> I do not, it says this, this, I'm reading from the book. I recommend that you meditate in bed because you associate bed with sleep. For the same reason, I don't recommend that you lie down or use a recliner when you meditate. Did you just like slam the book? Yes, I did. Well, okay. Listen, <laughs> listen, listen, Linda. <laughs> this is not a debate. Linda, book recap. Linda. No, look, look, look. What I'm, what, look, I have a meditation room. Okay? I have a room that I meditate in. That is however, also, that's however, also your gaming room. So you have hype energy and low energy oh, in the same spot. Technically, not really though. I have my, but when I'm meditating, everything is shut off, and literally the room is completely like different, and it feels really, really good. And I, I have my seat really low, and I'm able to like cross and, and in a good place, and it's dark, just like I like it. Mm -hmm. But however, I'm not going to not meditate if I need to meditate you know, a good minute in my bed because I'm in the bed. I'm not, you know what I mean? I'm just not going to, you know. Yeah, I think what he's saying is, for example. You're going you, to have a session. Yes, like yeah. when you're, when like a lot of us will like extra minutes in the bed in the morning. Yeah. At some point in time you have a headache, but that's not the meditation he's talking about. He's yes. talking about the meditation oh, that yeah. you use to get into a situation so, of manifestation. Yeah, 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 yeah. And Absolutely. so when you're in those spots, so right. I guess the point is don't get to the point where the only type of meditation you're doing mm -hmm. is to get rid mm -hmm. of a headache mm -hmm. laying down. There should be some type of meditation where you're doing some internal work for your own spiritual practices on a daily basis, right. you know? Right. So it was something I thought was that the internal experience you have when you meditate has to be greater or has to have a greater amplitude your energy than the external past experience that you created the belief and perceptions that you want to change mm -hmm. so you hear what i'm saying there mm -hmm. basically you have to the point that when you 
meditate and you're getting into your manifestation, that energy has to be greater than whatever crap you've created right. in the your in your external world in order to create real change. Right. So right. I thought that was cool. It's, it really kind of shows you. And one thing I've really taken away from this book is meditation is not this foo foo thing that a lot of people make it out. To be. It's work. And I think a lot yeah. of times, I'm not going to sound PC, but religion and specific, specifically, and the reason why I have my feelings about religion, because it takes responsibility away from you and gives it to something else. Mm. And when I think us as people, we are responsible for our own shit. Yeah. So even yeah. with meditation, that was just another way to give, give it to something else. Right. But when you look at meditation from this perspective, it's on you. Oh, yeah. It's, yeah. it's whatever intensity you put in. It. It's not about just sitting on your couch, turning some music on, and la, la, la. And it's la. the power of the mind. Yes. It, it shows the power of the mind. So it's like when you're doing of. this as a practice, yeah. it's, you, it's literally like a muscle. And you strengthen that muscle daily right. and daily and daily. And I will say, I, it's like convicting to me because I know that I have not put in the time and the work I want to and so I really can't there are times when I get a little just discouraged but then I have to be like but did you even do the work so why the hell are you discouraged you know what I mean mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so I think just reading like this chapter 12 in particular mm -hmm. it just made me like remind myself that it's time to really what did I say I wanted to I said the other day I wanted to put a Facebook message and I, I said it was going to be not well received oh, yeah. Yeah, for and I just said yeah. sorry for the F-bomb but sometimes we all just all of us as people to grow the fuck up mm -hmm. and that's the only F-bomb I'm going to I said because mm -hmm. <laughs> at the end of the day like yesterday I went for a walk early mm -hmm. in the morning and I was just walking and I was talking to myself in my head i'm like why can't i you know tell myself to do this like a few times a week and it actually happened and it went back to that dom you have to grow the fuck up mm -hmm. and at some that point one, by the way. i'll say it a couple <laughs> more times because it's just a specific point y'all uh, we all have to take a moment to literally grow up Very, Very and it's it's important sometimes the answer is grow up yeah you know? and so for me i'm taking that to myself internally when it comes to meditation and really putting it in my daily practices as being just as important as going into the kitchen making sure you eat mm -hmm. just as important as drinking water exercise yeah, yeah. taking the dog for a walk so that she's not batshit in here you yeah. know what i mean like all of yeah. those things are just important and up to us as adepts not adults but adepts mm -hmm. to be able to look at your 24 hours time block or whatever you want to do, whatever your preferred method is and make, make shit happen because you've taken the time to make shit happen. Period. Right. Literally. Yeah. That that's, that's all great points. Cause sometimes people just need to grow up. Yeah. And when you, ourselves included, what I'm, it's all about. Yeah. It's all in all in self. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you know, people feel whatever they want to feel, but there's times where you have to say it to yourself. Yeah. And there's things that you do, you're like, you know what? I, I just need to just do it anyway. Exactly. Instead of, you know, holding back. Exactly. So that is it for You Are the Placebo. We are book mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. we are now mm -hmm. on to a new book starting next week, this week, going into next week's podcast. Yes. Okay. So new book, new energy, going into a new month, November. And yeah. it is Scorpio yeah. season. Womp womp. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> AJ's a Scorpio, as you can tell. Uh, yes. yes. So <laughs> yeah. Sorry. anyways, so the book that we have chosen <laughs> the second book of the week is called The 8080 Marriage, a new model for a happier, stronger relationship by Nathan and Kaylee Klimp. That's K-L-E-N-D. 
not to be confused R K E M P. So uh, I went back and forth, obviously, um, because we are human and we argue a ton, and we have issues as well. We I've come to the conclusion that I need this podcast to feel like it's helping us too. Mm-hmm. So I took a deep dive to find a book felt like we could learn better tips on how to interact relationally so that that's kind of how I came up with this book. Yeah, so, something um, hit me too the other day um, intuitively mm-hmm. where I was just thinking about um, you know couples that tend to actually have you know deep arguments. Mm-hmm. I just to not make people feel when they argue to feel discouraged Mm -hmm. i felt intuitively that we only have those arguments because we're both intelligent and thinking people absolutely we're thinkers exactly you know what i mean so it's always more to something than just the surface of everything that people think it is exactly you know what i mean like if we're not thinkers then I mean, half the time we're like, okay, yeah, (laughs) no, I don't know. You know what I mean? So the the fact that I feel like, you know, we are all like thinkers, we, 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 we dive into things, we get deep. That's why sometimes a lot of times arguments tend to happen and they're not necessarily arguments. They could be just debates. Right. Or just disagreements of something. Right. You know? Well, there are 240 pages in this book. Mm Mm-hmm. 15 chapters mm-hmm. <laughs> and they're broken up into four parts. Mm-hmm. So part one that will be this week is exploring the three models of marriage. Part two is cultivating a new mindset. Part three is building a new structure and living the 88. So we'll definitely be finding out more about what that exactly means. So I'm definitely excited to dive in and obviously it works out perfectly that there are four parts. So mm-hmm. we'll obviously be working on one a week. Yeah. Yep. Going forward. All right. So, all right. Now this section here, we're going to play questions, questions, questions. And the purpose of this segment is to keep the hot and spicy, you know? Yeah. And so the you. thing is we have a new deck of cards and they have different ones to choose from, pretty much, but shows intimacy. And, Dom, can you tell us a little bit about this? <laughs> I sure can, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> the name of the deck of cards is Best Self, and they have tons of different decks. Right. Um, like he said, we picked the intimacy deck. Mm-hmm. Um, basically, it's a deck of 150 cards, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and they are divided six categories so there's about you intimacy Mm -hmm. relationships past life and random Uh, so what we are going to do is allow us both to pick a category and a card to answer so out of those six categories which category are you feeling come on come on you can do it um I will say, just to christen the pot with relationships. Let's do relationships. Relationships, okay. Just, These you know, because that's the topic at hand, right? I guess, right now. These suckers are Courtney. Let me find that one. Third rule. Now, and right I, here. I, and I would say, too, this would be something to ask everyone out. Definitely comment either your answers or your questions or if you would like to let choose the next you know which which of the topics you would like to pick you know definitely comment on that. yes so like a lovely card trick aj is going to pick so pick i pick card. it and you're going to answer it no pick the card and we'll both answer it oh yes okay i got it so what you got <laughs> what you got what you what this you is, got? This is kind of good. Kind of <laughs> good. This is good. Okay, what does it say? Describe a time pointed you, but you act like nothing was wrong. 
Do I ever act like nothing's wrong? No. But you acted like nothing was wrong. At this point. Yes. Yeah, like when I disappointed you and then you just act like nothing happened. So meaning this is like our topic. Mm-hmm. The hard questions. Unfortunately, I don't have, I don't ever not act like nothing's wrong. I can do the first part of the question. I can do the first part of the question. No, even if I don't have anything to say, uh-huh. I can't not act different. Okay. So okay. whether it's just me not like, there are some times where I just want to be. Alone. So whether it's you know we get to the point where we watch our shows, we watch movies and mm-hmm. call all the time in the evening. We mm-hmm. always have like an evening thing. Mm-hmm. So there are times when we don't. Sometimes it's because I just want to be free flowing. Sometimes it's because I'm mad. Right. So Oh. I was, you know, it's funny you say that right now. Mm-hmm. That is the exact answer that I'm having. It's based on the exact same, the exact that I'm about right now. Okay, so you go ahead. Okay, so, and you, you answered yours. No, I you didn't. Finished? You go ahead. Are you finished? I want you to finish first. I don't, I never act like that thing's wrong. Okay. A time with you disappointed me would be just how you handle my feelings mm-hmm. all the time okay the end okay <laughs> it's at the end uh, okay i feel like you take them as negotiable like i can tell you like i feel you don't have to feel that way or yeah something. or it, no it's very like i can say this hurts my feelings you can right. be like well you shouldn't be hurt by that it's more like that versus being like Okay, when I do this, it hurts your feelings. Now let me find mm-hmm. a way to do this this, this way because I don't want to hurt your feelings anymore in this way. You gotcha. don't go there. You're like, well, you shouldn't feel that way. The end. Uh, Never gets addressed. Uh, and then I just put it under the rug and it comes up later. Uh, okay. The end. Got you. Got your turn. Um, well, I'll, I'll, I'll keep that in mind. Mm-hmm. And I'll... I'll try to focus on that more on for me what you said the first time you know when you was like changing like what you what you might feel at that moment and you said one thing and then you would change and then it's like something different Mm -hmm. or you want to do something else or you don't want to do something else or i think for me is when when you change Mm -hmm. when you change like your my mind yeah, I guess when you change your mind or when you say, like, we're all like, yeah, we're going to do this today. And then I'm like, I don't feel like it. Yeah, and then it's like, you're like, okay, you're not going to do it. You don't want to do it. Or you never want to do it. Or then you kind of, like, go into a rant of why you don't want to do something. And then you kind of get mad about it. Yeah. <laughs> and then it's like, now you're cussing us out. And then we're like, oh. Um, I can tell you why that happened. And literally, <laughs> I ain't said a word. <laughs> I can tell you why that happens. I can clarify for you in two seconds. Because keep this podcast under an hour. We've got six minutes to go. Oh. <laughs> it happens because, A, whatever I do, I don't necessarily want to do. Mm-hmm. But in the moment, I do it in good faith because I'm trying to give and mm-hmm. not receive. Mm-hmm. Then it gets time to do it. And really don't feel like doing it and all that comes up is all the time i've wanted something that you don't oblige then in that moment i'm angry because whatever i've ever wanted mm-hmm. or the things that matter the most to me i feel like i don't get those things so i'm having a clash of the titans in my brain of feeling guilt for not giving but also feeling justified in my not giving because i don't receive yeah i see what i do with so on. I'm a thinker. It's a lot going on. <laughs> but and that goes like back student. to my point. Hello. <laughs> as a thinker, as a thinker, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's always more complicated than you think. Like, you don't get that. It's always more complicated it, than you think. People don't understand that, that in our heads that it's a lot more than just, oh, it should be just like this. No. It's not Life just like this. Life will never be black and white. It's not just like this. Because you have to understand the ins, outs. You know, the sides, the backs, the fronts, oh you know, of God, everything. Really? I mean, the backs know, and the fronts. All of that. All of it. All right. 
So, go to the next, which we're going to do is pick our drawing for the week. And drum roll, please. The next week podcast and episode this week will be... I'm going to give it to you. You can read it. Okay. Drum rolling still because the paper won't open. <laughs> okay. Huh? Read it. Gridlock. What is holding us back? So if you didn't hear that, he said, Gridlock. What is holding us back? They heard it. So. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll dive into all of that on next week's podcast. Yay. Alrighty. Yay. So that does it for this week's podcast. <laughs> mm-hmm. All of the articles <laughs> and tools that are used to drive today's discussion forward can be found in the description box, as well as links to Joe Dispenza's book. If you want to like read that at your leisure, as well as the new book of the month, 8080 marriage found in the description box. So thank you again for tuning into today's podcast. Be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And of course, Ignite, ignite Your Energy! energy.